What is up guys, Mr. The Reverts here and a lot of people are still a little bit sour because there is no real campaign in Black Ops 4, however, there are still the specialist missions and they've kind of filled in for the lack of a campaign, but even then though, there still are quite a few people who still would rather have something that connects or even continues the story of the Black Ops universe, which is why I'm making this video because there might actually be something bigger going on here than we all know. I'm surprised I haven't seen more people talking about this because it's kind of interesting So let's discuss the possibility of a connection between blackout battle royale the specialist characters Mason Woods, Savannah and maybe even zombies if you guys haven't played any of the specialist missions, I highly recommend doing so before watching this because there may be some spoilers involved here, but in case you don't know what the missions are, basically it's just kind of like a training ground for the characters and their abilities and weapons, and also there's a few cutscenes that talk more about the story. Now from what I gather from playing the specialist missions and watching the cutscenes is that they all got betrayed by Savannah and now they're going to war, but that can be a video in itself but it's not really the main focal point of this video because we still don't even know what exactly is going on with these specialist characters and I can only assume that we're gonna be getting more of these missions and cutscenes that'll explain everything when more characters come out but if you want to go check out the cutscenes, I'm going to find a video and link it down below in the description for you guys. Now, the biggest cutscene that kind of hints towards a big, big story arc is the very last cutscene. And before I talk about that, I'm going to play it for you guys right now. Stinks. Angola. I hear it. Sorry, kid. No. It's you in the box. It's always been you. Vorkuta. Don't black out, man. I'm on it. There are so many questions raised here, like what does Mason mean by it was you in the box, and what the heck did Frank Woods even write? Well, if we take a look at the background, Mason is actually in the zombies map Verrucked or the Asylum, and it looks kind of like the Asylum that is set in Blackout Battle Royale. Also, one thing to note here is Wood says, don't black out, man, I'm on it. Now, that has me thinking maybe Woods is possibly referencing the Blackout Battle Royale map. Also, on the little description for the final cutscene, it's titled, It's You in the Box. Sergeant Frank Woods mourns the loss of a fallen subjects. What did he write? Go find out. So, with that whole don't black out, man, and go find out what Woods wrote, it led me to the location of the asylum on blackout however when you go to that location we see this it's a broken mirror with these people's faces on them now I have no clue who these people are I'm not sure if they're the voice actors for these specialist characters or maybe if they were these specialist characters before I have no clue honestly but as you can see here there is no writing anywhere now as for it was you in the box I'm, I'm just completely stumped, but after thinking about it a bit more, I remember in Black Ops 2, there was a mission that involved Mason and Hudson rescuing Woods from a large crate or a pretty large box, and this is where my mind has quite literally been fried, just trying to piece what we have together and coming up with new theories. So maybe during this mission, in fact, maybe during all of the Black Ops 2 missions, Woods and Mason's roles were just swapped, they're reversed. It was Mason who was in the box or the the large crate It was Mason who ended up getting his leg shot and that's why he's in a wheelchair I don't know honestly, but just there is so much going on here than we really are aware of and people think that Black Ops 4 just doesn't have anything to do with the Black Ops universe or the Black Ops storyline. In fact, it has a lot to do. It pieces together the mysterious puzzle that still has not yet been completed for eight years now. It's honestly just so insane.
Now, in the Specialist HQ, there's a section titled Intel, and each one of these individual uh, cards here are basically little audio snippets of Mason, Woods, some of the Specialist characters, Savannah, and even Menendez and more characters. And the way you unlock these little audio snippets is by completing some challenges in the game. I'm not going to go over the challenges, but instead I'm going to play these audio snippets for you guys and give you my own commentary afterwards to kind of break it down and give you my theory so without further ado let's take a look at the very first audio snippet which is titled the black hole hey where are you what keeps you alive in a cage is knowing you're in a cage you're not in a cage frank i look him in the eye every single day I'm losing them. <laughs> oh, come on. Now you're just feeling sorry for yourself. Out here, they get another shot. A fair chance. <laughs> That's why I love you, sweetheart. You make no fucking sense whatsoever. <laughs> oh, piss off. They made a choice. If you're losing them, just grab yourself a Huey and run search and rescue. Yeah, that's a great fucking idea. You can't kill me. Now this audio snippet description says Savannah reassures her lover that his mission is worth fighting for and obviously the man talking in this clip or Savannah's lover is Sergeant Frank Woods so maybe Savannah and Woods are in some sort of a relationship but that's really all I can gather from this. There's definitely a lot of loose ends here. Maybe if you guys can piece something together uh, please let me know down below in the comments. And the next up here we have the Immortal Crimson. They come at night. Yeah. I've heard grav boogies, jetpacks. Masaki says there's something underground. What's something? Something Savannah doesn't want us to see. And what I found in one of the hangars behind a desk. Disturbing. Beyond disturbing. You don't get disturbed. What the hell did you find in there? Go to the hangar. See for yourself. The two people talking in this clip are Seraph and Ruin. Seraph is obviously very startled and disturbed. She says that there's something, quote, underground and that she has found something in a hangar behind a desk. Now, the only thing I could think of was the hangars on Turbine on the Blackout map. And I checked behind all of the desks and I couldn't find a thing. So maybe if you guys are interested, go check out the hangars, see if you can find something else. And then uh, I also looked underground on Nuketown in the bunker and, and still I just couldn't find any clues that possibly could lead up to anything going on here with what Seraph and Ruin are talking about. So again, if you guys could find anything, then please let me know down below in the comments. But now we're going to be moving on to West of Eden. You're out of your fucking mind! My project is beyond our wildest dreams. I made this real. Me! It's not ethical. You've seen what happens. How is that a better world? People are dying. The enemy doesn't play by your rules. Right. That's why you stole theirs. What happened to you? Uh, you know what? It's over. I won't let you do this. In West of Eden, we hear both sisters, Savannah and Jessica, arguing about Savannah's project. Now, if you're listening for the first time, then uh, it's not really going to make sense, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. The name of Savannah's project is called Project Blackout, and as we continue listening, it does make a little bit more sense, and we also find out that Savannah is working with none other than Raul Menendez. So, let's move on to the next clip, which is Raul's Way. The cancer is spreading. Our archetypes are the cure. You, me, Woods, Mason. All of us. This is a matter of national security. I have sworn to guarantee the success of this project. You cannot walk back what you just told me. You better back the fuck off. It is out of your hands now. I will take care of it. I will fix this. It's too late. Remember, 
You came to us. Look, you can't, you can't do this. All right, she's my sister. Was your sister. Just try it. Raul talks about the cancer spreading, but the archetypes Woods, Menendez himself, Savannah, and Mason are the cure. Besides that, I do not have a clue on what else is going on here. They're both discussing more about Project Blackout, but not much else to me can be indicated here except the description says Jessica's survival hangs in the balance. So let's check out the running woman. Dropping like flies. The fuck is going on? When did you last see Wilkes or that psycho Kristoff? People are actually dying out there in the zone, for real. Well, that ain't gonna be us. I feel you, Walsh. Uh, one minute I think I'm on top of this, and, and then it feels like I'm in a dream. Ascend from darkness. I keep seeing shapes. No, not shapes. They're numbers. You seeing fucking numbers. In this audio clip, we hear both Battery and Ruin talking about people dying in the zone. Now, to me, my guess is the zone they're talking about is the storm zone in Blackout Battle Royale. And the reason why I say that is because Battery goes on to say that she is seeing shapes, but then Ruin says they're not shapes, she's seeing fucking numbers. Now, as you may already know, if you play Blackout Battle Royale, when you're in the storm zone for a long period of time, you start to see numbers. And and these are the numbers that Alex Mason would see back in Black Ops 1. So let's check out the next clip and see what that has in store for us. I told Savannah I'll whistle blow this whole deal. Then five minutes later I'm being shadowed. Should have kept my mouth shut. He's gonna kill me. Who? Raul. He's crazy. You've heard the rumors. What went down in Panama? Panama. Right. I don't buy that bullshit. Raul's smart, creates his own myths, Then people think he's a monster, and he uses that shit. What about Lucy? What, what if he goes after Lucy? Shh, relax. Let's go talk to Savannah. Maybe she didn't tell him. She spilled her guts the second I walked out of there. Well, we're gonna straighten this out right now. Come on. Jessica tells Alex Mason that she's going to whistleblow the Project Blackout, and Raul is going to kill her. Now, how is she talking to Mason? I have no clue. Maybe he's like a hologram, or maybe he was brought back from the dead or something. I don't know. Again, everything is just so loose-ended, and just, yeah, very, very crazy stuff is going on here in this clip. So let's move on to the kiss of death. I am in over my head, all right? Listen to me, Jessica. He is going to kill you. How could you do this to your own sister? Me? You need to talk some sense into her. What she's doing is treason, for God's sake. And what are we doing here to the subjects? What do you call that? Look, Jessica, it doesn't matter. Now, fuck all that. Your life is in danger. And Lucy... Lucy? My daughter! Yeah! In this clip here, I think we have Mason. I'm not all too sure if that's the male talking. And then we have Jessica and Savannah talking. And uh, her life is in danger. And then some fighting between, I assume, the sisters occur. And then we hear a gunshot. So we're going to see what happens in the next clip, Dead Again. It tells us again what happens next. Jessica. Oh my god, Jessica. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jessica. <laughs> What the fuck have you done? What have you done? In Dead Again, we find out that it was actually Savannah who shot Jessica, and she's choking on her own blood. 
It's a very, very gory scene all around just listening to, you know, the gargles of blood she's choking on. And then the male character says, what have you done? This is where I get even more confused. So, um, the audio intel just kind of doesn't line up with what happened in, in the specialist campaign. So, uh, let's check out the next clip and see what that has in store for us. Where am I? Where's Jessica? I have answered your questions. Where is she? You don't know who you're fucking with. My family is the most powerful. She, she wants to make a better world for everyone. It's not her fault. Fuck you! Where's my granddaughter? In Eternal Sunshine, we hear Mason talking and he's looking for Jessica. Now in the calling card, we also see here that he's hooked up to a bunch of wires and then he says that his family is the most powerful and she, I assume he's referencing to Savannah or Jessica, wants to make a better world. So after hearing this now, I am fairly certain that both Jessica and Savannah are a part of Mason's family in some way, shape or form. He does reference Jessica as his granddaughter um i don't know again i'm still very very confused i don't know who's who mason is talking to either um but one thing i i kind of got from this though is um both jessica and savannah are a part of mason's heritage so let's check out the next clip which is lost highway contact has been confirmed jessica got to them before you sh before she died who is compromised all of them! You know what must be done. Yes, sir. Good. You are a murderer. That must stay between us. Yeah, I understand. Dr. Meyer, you and your project are now mine. In Lost Highway, we're back to Menendez and we hear him say that Jessica got to them before Savannah did and uh, I assume that they're talking about the specialists here, I assume that's who them are and also we do find out that Jessica and her project Blackout are now under Menendez's control. So let's move on to Mason's Ladder, we're almost done here with the audio clips. Ascension, 7, 21. 14, 20, 4, 0, 5, 4, 20. His sister. No, you're still in the box, Mason. Her sister. 2, 1, 14. Archetype. Yeah. Both of us. Mason. Mason, come back. Focus. Where are you right now? Oh, they're, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. What's, what's incoming? Incoming! What's? I need ammo! What? They're not human. They're not human. Not human. That is the whole point. 16, 6, 12, 14, 11, 22, 6. Courage, baby. Profiles. You got this. They're not monsters. You see what they want you to see, man. Easier to kill. Frank. Frank. I'm right here, buddy. I am right here. Get me out of here! In Mason's Ladder, we hear Woods reciting numbers to Mason, and these numbers could very well be the ones that Mason hears or sees in his head from Black Ops. And then he says they're coming and they're not human. And then he says they're also not monsters. I don't know who or what he's talking about. Maybe they could be zombies or something, I don't know. But also in the calling card here, we have Frank Woods with a quote that says, history doesn't repeat itself, but it does blackout. So here again we have another reference possibly to the blackout game mode or maybe even they could be referencing to project blackout but let's take a look at the next clip which is titled Vercuda with WTF yeah I brought him back using your fucking numbers my numbers no longer all right he's in here you ready 
Duh. Mason! Yeah, it's better be goddamn good, because you woke me up. Mason! You look like hammered shit. It's all in your mind, Woods. Reznov. Oh, f fuck! No! Mason! Mason, Mason, stop! Stop! He's real! He's right here! He made it out of Verkuda. I want you to look at him. Mason, look at him! It is me, comrade. Reznov. Frank, what the fuck? Yeah, Al. He was the first. The first what? The first... archetype. Now here we actually find out that Woods brought Reznov to Mason, and he actually brought Mason back with Reznov's numbers, but then Reznov says that the numbers aren't his anymore. Mason then kind of flips out after seeing Reznov, but then Woods reassures him that Reznov is actually real, and he made it out of Verkuda. I honestly just flipping and mind blown right now. We also find out that Reznov was the first archetype. I don't know what these archetypes are though. They could be maybe like copies or something similar to the original person, maybe like an AI. And then uh, also here we do, we do get the uh, clues that Savannah is with Menendez and Menendez is bringing back all these characters maybe to uh, to do something. They do kind of hint towards like curing uh, for the cancer or something, but like th there's still so many loose ends here. Honestly, I just don't know what's going on completely though. But the fact that we have, you know, all these original amazing characters from Black Ops 1 and 2 is totally mind-blowing. Like, I did not expect Reznov at all to be brought back. So let's check out the last clip, which is titled Angel's Heart. They will all be taken care of by nightfall. Excellent. This whole incident was merely an oversight. Project Blackout is thriving. Sites are under construction all over the world. Ascension. House of three. Jessica's death. Twelve. Was not in vain. Our work Five. will turn the tide against the Crimson Cancer. Three. Your vision of a better world is upon us. Zero. Oh my God, no. 25. No, not my 18. vision. It Five. never was. 18. This was all you. I don't understand. Twenty. If, Eleven. if not yours. Eighteen. We've been. Seventeen. We can. Twenty-four. We've been working toward this common goal together. 14, this has zero, been. Six, it was always your vision. Seven, Eleven. You figure it out. Four. Four. Twenty-four. Five. One. Here Menendez says that Project Blackout is thriving and there are sites under construction all over the world and then also in the background we hear a woman's voice reciting more numbers and that is the last clip of the intel section. My mind is honestly just completely fried guys. There still is a huge unsolved puzzle here but I believe that Black Ops 4 is going to be another piece to that puzzle and like I said at the very start so many people were just upset and angry that there was no true campaign in Black Ops 4 which yeah is kind of true however after doing some research and analyzing some of the clues given in the intel section and cutscenes there is a bigger story here in Black Ops 4 as a whole that connects all of the Black Ops games together and continues on that story. Also one thing I want to mention is on the official Black Ops 4 Wikipedia page there is a plot section for Blackout and I'm gonna have it on screen for you guys and uh, it says here that the lore of Blackout can be pieced together using intel files unlocked from completing specialist tutorial missions. The story seems to take place within a simulated world loosely based off the Black Ops saga's narrative. Savannah 
Jason is revealed to be running Project Blackout with a partner Raul Menendez where they perform tests on human subjects. An epidemic involving the Nova 6 chemical gas is also implied. In the world, Frank Woods also keeps a check on his friend Alex Mason who is labeled by Menendez as an archetype. So there is a lore, there is a story behind Blackout and that story also ties in together with the entire Black Ops universe. Treyarch, I have to give you guys a round of applause. Like, a lot of people were so quick to judge on uh, the campaign not being in Black Ops 4, this and that. But Blackout Battle Royale is actually a part of the narrative for the Black Ops universe. So, what does this mean for the future? My guess is there's going to be live events that connects the story together. Just like how there's live events in Fortnite Battle Royale. You know, for example, with the rocket going off. Um... And the uh, also the cube thing what's happening going on right now um, so I assume there's gonna be live events I assume there's gonna be you know things that connect blackout to the black ops storyline as a whole and yeah guys like I said I'm just completely mind blown just ecstatic I honestly I'm just lost for words at this point I want to figure out more um, but I can't do this alone so this video is mainly meant for you guys you know I want everyone to, you know, get together and just try to find something, anything that could possibly tie in the storyline and, and just any kind of clues. I just want everybody to be aware of this and maybe we can all come together and figure out this massive plot hole. Maybe we can all work together to piece this puzzle together. Guys, tell me your thoughts about this down below in the comments. Also, drop a like if you guys did enjoy and thanks for watching. Till next time, I'll see you guys later.